What's going on guys? Today's a new day. Welcome back to the channel and thank you again for watching. It's been a few months since I posted a video and I just wanted to give you guys an update of what's been going on uh, with me personally and also with the car. I feel like I owe it to you guys to give you an explanation of where I've been and why I've been MIA. I'm going to give that to you today as well as give you an update on the build and the plans for it and show you what I've been doing in the past few months. I've been very quiet about what I've been doing uh, with the car. So first reason why I've been gone, just slobbered all over me, dude, is this guy right here, this little guy right here. Can you, can you look at the camera? Look at the camera. Come on, buddy. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so this guy right here, um, he was born in December. Um, he is four and a half months. He is baby number two. So I don't know if you guys have seen my daughter before, but I've, I've put her in some of the videos. But yeah, um, so now I have two kids and um, honestly, you know, I'm gonna be very honest with you guys, brutally honest with you guys. You know, it's been a challenge trying to find time to a lot towards my car. That's just me because, you know, I'm learning as a parent, you know, and as I get older, as I get more experienced, I know things will, will get better and I'll have more time. But that's the first reason. The second reason why I've been gone and why I've been MIA is because I got a new job. For those of you who have been following me and also been keeping tabs on me and watching the videos, you may have known that I've worked as a mechanical engineer in the steel industry um, my responsibilities then and still now were to uh, design equipment that was used in retrofits and modernizations and, and upgrades for old and existing steel processing equipment and steel making equipment i now work as a fluid systems engineer with a new company some of you may ask if you are familiar with this industry if you're familiar with the type of uh, work that i'm doing you would probably be asking why did i go to fluid systems engineering instead of uh, staying mechanical engineering um, and i tell everyone the same answer and that's because i just wanted a better picture of what uh, i'm working on when i say that i mean uh, let's take for example our cars okay our cars are very simple yet complex system uh, that include many different subcategories and many, many different um, areas one of them being mechanics um, and most of us are familiar with mechanics right if you tinker with your car if you're a technical person uh, you're familiar with mechanics but when it comes to hydraulics cooling systems and um and you know like fuel systems in a car some of us might not actually know uh, the theory behind uh, how these things work and how they're actually calculated. Like cars, I am very interested with the machinery that we design for the steel industry and to be able to learn the hydraulics and the fluid systems behind it, the cooling systems behind it, um, it's just, it gives me, it broadens my view and my understanding of the machinery itself. And, and just in the long run, it's gonna be beneficial for me. You know, going to a new job has been a challenge for me. Um, it is a learning curve once again. It's like I'm starting from scratch. You know, I had about four years experience as a mechanical engineer, so, and that was good experience too. You know, I learned a lot in those four years, but now that I'm, starting to go all over again as a fluid systems engineer um, it is it is a challenge so that is the other reason why I've been gone for so long because I just wanted to be able to focus on my career get that out of the way get to a comfortable spot where I can start putting time towards the car and towards um, any of my other hobbies right buddy I wanted to also give you guys an update on the car and the build and um, and let you guys know how that's going the plans I have for it this year I have been doing things in the background as I've said and I wanted to show you guys just a little overview of what I've done so far so let's go take a look at it in the garage all right so we're back down in the garage I'm gonna do a quick walk around and show you guys what I've been doing in these last few months I've actually only started working on it maybe about a month ago but uh, as I mentioned in a previous video that I had BC coilovers that were going in, those are installed. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. I guess I don't really need to show you guys all four corners, but uh, if you're wondering what this painter's tape is for, uh, I am painting the spindle nut because uh, I don't want it to look ugly whenever I install the new wheels, which I'll show you in a second, uh, because I won't be running center caps. I also have the Skunk 2 upper control arms and I did the Hello Flush mod um, using a grinding bit on my Dremel. There's a couple videos on YouTube that kind of show you what needs to be done and uh, a few places on different forums that will show you as well. I got uh, new lower control arms with new bushings, lower control arm ball joints. Those are Sen-K triple fives. I also did put, I won't, I don't need to show you this, but I have SPC 
uh, camber and tow arms in the rear over here. I left myself a little note because I was playing with my ride height and I need to go a quarter inch lower. So I left myself a little note there. Uh, but I'm also painting this. Like I said, I won't be running center caps because I've heard some stories that when people are autocrossing or tracking their car, which I'm really hoping this year I can get the car on a uh, at least a track day, just something simple and casual. But I've heard stories that people actually lose their center caps and I'm not spending $250 for a set of four center caps for these new wheels. These are Advent Racing RZ 2s. 18 by 10, uh, obviously 5 by 114.3 with an offset of 25. These are the wheels. I did a test fit on the car last night, but I'm actually going to save that for another video and show you guys what it looks like on the car. What I'm doing right now is taking off these stickers because uh, fortunately for me, these Hankook RS4s are symmetrical, so I can actually flip the tires. That way, um, these will be ran on the inside and the insides will not be the outside. Um, I also want to do that not just for to even out the wear and get more out of the tire, but I'm also sick and tired of these tire stickers. These tire stickers get dirty way too fast and they've just been a pain to, to maintain. I just, I don't know, I don't know. I thought I liked the look and I did for a little bit, but now I, I think I just want a clean, you know, black tire. The next big thing that's on the list is I am replacing all pads and rotors and actually calipers. So I'm actually putting in um, Volvo S60R calipers in the front and 350Z rear calipers, the two pot ones in the rear. Fortunately, there is a uh, member of the TL community who has been so kind to produce and manufacture adapter brackets for the TL to use the 350Z uh, rear Brembos. Actually, earlier today I had a buddy of mine pick up my Volvo calipers so that he can machine off the ears of what's needed. In that video, when I actually cover the whole brake install and the whole process, I'll show you what needs to be done in case you guys want to do this. But I will let you guys know that all credit goes to uh, this guy, the TL community, and I'll put his link down below. Um, he's been doing mods for a while. Just give him a follow, and if you have any questions that I can't answer, you know, you can always ask him. Um, he's an open book as many of us guys in the TL community are uh, There's not many of us that are gonna hide information from you unless if it's for whatever some special reason special case Let me show you guys real quick um, a little, Another update on the engine bay because I didn't really change anything here, but I did get the RV6 Strut tower bar and this is gonna be painted burnt copper to match everything else similar to the old um, Strut tower bar that I had the OEM one and uh, I had to get this one because with me really wanting to get into autocross this year and maybe a track day, I want to be able to dial in the um, suspension. So I need to get the damping settings. I need to access them easily. So I had to get something like this. Otherwise, I would have had to drill holes at both uh, mounting points. I just really didn't want to do that. So I just decided to go this route. And uh, I think it's more of a cleaner look and it kind of slims things down in the engine bay. I think that's about it. I think that's about covers the video. Um, make sure you guys stick around and stay tuned, you know, in the upcoming weeks and months because I will be posting more content and um, I will be doing, like I said, in a few weeks, I'll be doing this brake conversion. So uh, stick around for that. And then also I'll be doing some more uh, auto crossing and then hopefully I can get it, the car on the track. I'll be documenting that. Just stay, stay tuned. I'm sorry again. And I apologize for, you know, not posting frequently and uh, consistently, but I'm, I'm working on it guys. Just bear with me and thank you for sticking around. Thank you guys for subscribing. Any of you new guys out there, um, welcome to the channel. That wraps up this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and be safe, peace.